with new findings on the achievement gap in early childhood education. The brief cites that an achievement and development gap is evident as early as nine months of age. This broadens significantly by the time the child turns two. That's nearly a full year earlier than previous research reported. Cross-disciplinary knowledge documents the importance of early childhood in bridging that gap. Current research identifies another disparity among professionals as to how best build that bridge. Research has documented that children are advancing into primary school without the skills they need to succeed. These outcomes are evident from both accredited and non-accredited early childhood programs that have successfully passed the quality rating systems assessment. What then are these assessments measuring? And how influential are these rating systems on the quality of child development outcomes? To address these questions, three most widely used quality rating systems in the state of Iowa are studied. The quality rating and improvement systems, including the tiered quality rating and improvement systems, Family Child Care Environmental Rating Scale, Revise, and the Early Childhood Environmental Rating Scale, 3. The purpose of this project is to explore the impact of quality rating and improvement systems have on child development outcomes such as school readiness. Child care centers are more likely to complete quality rating and improvement systems assessments. Most states require child care centers to be licensed and registered with the state. Several center programs will complete and achieve national accreditation status as well. However, according to Witherbottom and Piasta, Rakes and Associates, Yazian and Iruka, these programs will still fail to prepare children to succeed in primary school. This begs to question whether the quality rating and improvement system assessments are successful in meeting their objectives. According to the National Association for the Education of Young Children, quality rating systems serve several purposes. They help benchmark quality for consumers and broaden awareness of the components of quality. They provide additional incentives and resources to programs and they create stronger infrastructure to support and sustain the quality of program regardless of the setting. According to the Iowa Department of Human Services, the quality rating and improvement system is designed to increase childhood programs across the state. In 2015, Harms, Clifford, and Dyer released an updated Early Childhood Environmental Rating Scale, third edition. The new system assesses 35 items in six subscales. The previous edition assessed 43 items in seven subscales. Harms and Associates explained that these changes were intended to rate early childhood programs only by what could actually be observed. The Early Childhood Environmental Rating Scale 3 no longer assesses the quality of interactions during greeting and departing times or nap times for early childhood programs because they are not directly observed. This raises concern as research has linked the importance of quality relationships and interactions in early childhood to positive and negative outcomes in adolescence and adulthood. Moffitt and Associates found that a child's dangerous choices in adolescence could be predicted by the child's inability to regulate themselves in early childhood. Such negative behaviors and negative emotions produce a constant stream of negative stress on a child. Werner discussed multinational longitudinal studies on resilience in children, noting the effects of toxic stress on child development throughout adulthood. Werner concludes that resilience skills impact the whole child with influences on all domains of child development. Hall and Associates discovered a strong correlation between negative behaviors in children and nap time routines with one to three-year-olds. 
The researchers identified the caregiver's practices as central to the child's ability or inability to self-soothe. Greetings and departure times are primary sources of interaction between the parent and caregiver. The exchange of information during these times could greatly impact the child's development either positively or negatively. Hall and colleagues suggest using this time to exchange in meaningful dialogue to best understand the child and provide a continuity of care between home and school. Bowler and Associates conducted a study for a pilot quality rating and improvement systems called Seeds to Success. Interestingly, the researchers found that quality ratings and improvement systems not only vary considerably between state and local contexts, but also tallied 36 different variations of quality rating and improvement systems in their focus state. This particular quality rating systems pilot, the Seeds to Success, only measured two quality standards, curriculum and learning environment, and professional development and training. It made no attempt to assess the impact of quality rating and improvement systems on childhood outcomes. This study did provide an in-depth look at the quality rating and improvement systems and documented a lack of continuity within the system. Bowler and Associates discussed environmental rating systems at length as part of the quality rating and improvement systems. Recent research is drawing focus away from program accreditation and state registration. An increasing amount of research shows strong correlation between provider training and education and high quality program practices. Witherbottom and Piasta may be the first to study the correlation between accreditation of child care programs and school readiness outcomes. Their study found that accreditation was not associated with kindergarten readiness. This specific study unintentionally answered a larger question. By excluding family child care programs from their study, Center-based child care programs alone were responsible for the outcome.